In the name of Christ our Savior, welcome to this video worship service for the third Sunday in the season of Easter. I encourage you to download the service which is available on our website so that you can follow along during our worship service. Our opening hymn is hymn 221, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You made known to me the path of life. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace from morning until night, so that we may ever serve him in newness of life.
O God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We sing Psalm 67 responsibly by half verse. God be gracious to us and 
Gracious and merciful God, fill our hearts with joy and confidence, so that with all boldness we may proclaim the story of your salvation among all the peoples of the earth to the praise of your great name, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Our epistle lesson is from the first letter of St. Peter. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so, your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our hearts were burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. My dear friends in Christ Jesus our Lord, Ikea sells more furniture than any other store in the world, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first reason is that it is inexpensive furniture, and Ikea keeps costs low uh, in a number of ways. Uh, they don't use the highest quality materials to make their furniture. They also manufacture their furniture uh, with cheap labor uh, in, uh, in developing countries. But there's probably two more factors that really keep the cost of IKEA furniture very low. One is that you have to go and pick up the furniture and take it home yourself. And the second thing is, the big thing is, you have to assemble the furniture by yourself. Now perhaps you've done that, perhaps you've uh, assembled IKEA furniture. And if so, you know that it is not always as easy as it looks. I mean, it, it should be because you have all the pieces of the furniture there in the box. You even have all the tools. You also have an instruction manual. But the instruction manual is, is different because there are no words in the instruction manual. There's only pictures and diagrams. So you have to figure out what piece is what piece and what tool does this or the other thing. You have to figure out how to use all those tools and all those different pieces and assemble them correctly with the right uh, pieces together so that your furniture doesn't fall apart. Now to an IKEA rookie, that project of putting IKEA furniture together might seem pretty simple at first, but then it can quickly turn into hours and hours of frustration and even tears. In a way, that describes what we call the two Emmaus disciples in our Gospel lesson. They were trying to make sense of all the details, all the events of Holy Week. They were kind of like rookie IKEA uh, uh, customers trying to assemble low-cost Scandinavian furniture. They had all the pieces, but they just couldn't fit all the pieces together into the big picture. Now, our text, our text shows us how they had all the pieces. They said, Jesus was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him 
they did not see. Again, these two Emmaus disciples had all the pieces. They knew that Jesus was a prophet. They knew that Jesus performed miracles. They knew that Jesus had died and had come back from the dead. But they still couldn't fit all those pieces together. They still not, did not see the big picture of how Jesus was their Savior by his death and by his resurrection. They still needed to get all the pieces together. But Jesus comes to their rescue. Our text tells us that, that Jesus came up to them and, and somehow God prevented these disciples from recognizing Jesus, even though they had been very familiar with Jesus and what he looked like. Now, Jesus uses that, that uh, opportunity to teach his disciples how to put all the pieces of the gospel story together. Our text says, Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So Jesus points his disciples to the scriptures. That's because the Bible shows how Jesus is God's one and only son, and the only Savior for this world. Now that worked for them, but how do you come to believing in Jesus Christ? How do you put all the facts of what the Bible says about Jesus together to build a trust and a hope that saves you for eternal life in heaven? Is it by seeing Jesus with your own eyes? Or is it by seeing Jesus with a faith that is built by the Scriptures? Well, you know the answer to that question. It's by faith. And Jesus himself gave us the answer to that question a week after the events of our gospel lesson. After Jesus had appeared to Thomas, doubting Thomas in the upper room, Jesus told Thomas, after Thomas had seen him, Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now those words describe the Emmaus disciples. God had prevented them from seeing Jesus with their eyes. But as Jesus walked along with them, he explained the scriptures to them. And those lessons from the scriptures enabled these Emmaus disciples to see the whole picture of Jesus, their risen Savior. And our text shows us what happened because of this. Our text says, When Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? That burning feeling in their hearts was the Holy Spirit using the word of God to create saving faith for those two disciples. And that's what happens to you when Jesus sends the Holy Spirit into your heart when you hear God's word. Now, of course, Jesus himself does not instruct you the way that he did with those Emmaus disciples. But a main point of our gospel lesson is that Jesus does not have to be your personal instructor. Remember, the Emmaus disciples did not know that it was Jesus while he was teaching the lesson, they did not recognize that it was Jesus until the Bible lesson was over. And so that means that you have everything you need to assemble, to put together, saving faith in Jesus Christ. You have everything you need because you have the Bible. And the Bible is sufficient for salvation. And that is so important right now at this time because... We are not able to gather together at church in, in this building for worship, for, for Bible classes, for, for fellowship, and for receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. Now certainly all these things are extremely important. Certainly all these things are rich blessings and great privileges. And I hope that all of you are missing these things very, very much. And I hope that all of you are praying fervently that the day will soon come when we can all gather back in church and do church, do church as we normally do it. But also I hope you give thanks that we all still have the Bible. And the Bible does for us the same thing that Jesus did for those Emmaus disciples. The scriptures 
ignite the fire of faith. Now, you might think, well, sure, I have the Bible, but those Emmaus disciples had the Bible too. And didn't they also have Jesus as their instructor? Well, well yes, they did. But here's the difference between you and the Emmaus disciples. The Emmaus disciples only had what we would call today the Old Testament. You and I, we have the New Testament. And the New Testament does for us what Jesus did for the Emmaus disciples. The New Testament explains how the whole Old Testament is really all about Jesus. The New Testament puts all the pieces of the Jesus puzzle together. And so the New Testament is kind of like the IKEA customer helpline. You know, IKEA realizes that not everybody has an easy time putting their furniture together. So if the assembling of IKEA furniture perplexes you, you can always call the IKEA customer service line and ask them for help to build your furniture. And they do that in English, step by step. They guide you through the process of putting the furniture together. Now the thing is though, you have to realize that you are stuck. You have to make the call. You have to listen to what the people on the helpline have to say, and then you have to do what the IKEA professionals tell you to do. Well, likewise, to have the fire of faith burn in your heart, the Bible is there for you. In your own language, passage by passage, the Bible tells you all about how Jesus died for you and how he rose again from the dead to save you for eternal life in heaven. And the Old Testament, excuse me, the New Testament helps you understand the Old Testament and vice versa. The Old Testament helps you understand the New Testament. But again, to get all that help, you need to get a Bible, open the Bible, read the Bible, think about it, study it, and meditate on the Bible. Now again, some of you might say, well, you know, I've already tried all of that. And I already know the basics. Uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But you also say, but, but, but most of the time the Bible is confusing. You know, it's, it's not exactly the most clear book in, in the whole wide world. And I don't often understand everything that I read. And, and so I don't read the Bible as often as I know I should because I find that reading the Bible can be awfully confusing and awfully frustrating. Well, in those times of frustration... Jesus does not leave you high and dry. Jesus still teaches you and connects the dots between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus still explains from the scriptures God's love for you and all about how he himself, Jesus, poured out his precious blood for you to wash you clean and make you pure and holy. Jesus tells you all that. Jesus still uses the scriptures to ignite the fires of your faith and keep your faith burning brightly. And Jesus does all this for you in a way that is very similar to how Jesus taught those Emmaus disciples. Now again, remember, when Jesus was teaching those Emmaus disciples, they did not recognize it was Jesus. They did not know that it was really Jesus. Jesus was incognito. You might even say that Jesus was like wearing a mask. Well, Jesus still wears masks today to teach his people. Jesus wears the mask of faithful Christian parents who teach their kids Bible stories. Jesus wears the mask of, of dedicated Sunday school teachers who explain the scriptures, both Old and New Testament, to their students. Jesus wears the mask of Lutheran elementary school teachers and Lutheran high school teachers to guide their students into a deeper understanding of God's grace and the deeper significance and meaning of Christ's sacrifice for them. Jesus wears the mask of faithful, dedicated pastors who feed your faith with Christ-centered sermons, with in-depth Bible classes, and with personal counseling. Jesus wears the mask of a dear Christian friend who gives you and offers you guidance and comfort from God's holy word. 
And so like he was with the Emmaus disciples on that trip from Jerusalem to Emmaus, Jesus is by your side. Jesus is still with you every step of your life. And along the way, Jesus uses the scriptures to ignite the fire of your faith. And by faith in Jesus, you aren't walking to Emmaus. By faith in Jesus, you are walking the path to eternal life in heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep you in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Dear friends in Christ, uh, if this were a regular worship service with people in the pews at this time during the service, we would collect the offering. We're not going to be doing that right now, but I urge uh, the members of St. John's to either uh, mail in their offering checks, or I really encourage you to try out online giving by going to our website. In this way, you can continue to support the ministry of St. John's congregation even during this difficult time. And now let us pray using the Easter season responsive prayer. O Lord God, our strength, our song, and our salvation, you fulfilled your promises by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thanks be to God. You give us the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. In your compassion, you sent Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life to rescue the lost. Lift our eyes heavenward to see him who lives to make intercession for the saints and grant us confidence in the greatness of his power. Keep before us the vision of your redeemed people standing before your throne and singing the song of victory. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. Guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Merciful Lord Jesus, grant healing to the sick and strengthen the faith of the suffering and the dying. Assure them of your abiding presence and comfort them with the hope of eternal life. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we turn to you in faith and compassion on behalf of the family of your dear servants, Paul Brug and also Don Trader. Paul Brug, the professor at uh, the teacher at Shoreland Lutheran High School, and Don Trader, the brother in law of our member, Gladys Trader. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have called these, your dear children, home to the everlasting glories of heaven. We thank you for having made both Paul and Don your own dear child through baptism and through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. In the midst of the tears of those who mourn the loss of their loved one, let them also rejoice that you have guided them through the valley of tears that is this life and that you have received them so that they may now dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Comfort all who mourn and send your Holy Spirit to encourage their sad hearts with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. We also pray 
that you would strengthen all of us and keep us faithful to you. And finally, bring us all home in glory to the feast of victory that you have prepared for all believers. We pray through the merits of Jesus Christ and in his name, hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of your salvation. With happy hearts, we come before you and say, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. And hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest your scriptures, so that being strengthened and comforted by your word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
just one announcement. Uh, we have added a Bible class uh, to our uh, website. Uh, I'll be teaching a class on the, the use of Christian art to proclaim the good news of God's Word. Again, it's available on our website, and you can, you can watch it at your convenience. May God bless you. May you rejoice in the fact that you are a dear child of God, that Jesus Christ has given you faith in Him as your Savior. In Christ, have a blessed week.